After China's CATL recently announced that it would start production of all solid-state batteries from the end of this year, Japan's Toyota and Korea's SDI announced that they would begin mass production of all solid-state batteries around 2027. In addition to these, Taiwan's Prologium will begin construction of an all-solid-state battery production facility in France and start production from the end of 2026, investing a total of 5 billion euros by 2030 to raise the production scale to 48 gigawatt-hour. It is a situation where the signal that the full-scale competition in the all-solid-state battery field has begun has been fired. CATL introduces the term condensed battery instead of the term all-solid-state battery, making its meaning a bit confusing, but it is not the sulfide-based solid electrolyte promoted by SDI or Toyota. In addition, it is judged that it was named that way because it uses a rather unique form of organic material-based electrolyte, not the mixture of oxide-based solid electrolyte and polymer-based material used by Prologium. If you enter the keywords CATL and condensed battery in the Google search box, 41,400 search results are obtained, but as a result of my search, I did not find any article that properly reveals its identity. So today's video is about to unravel the secret of the solid electrolyte, the core material of their condensed battery. Well, even if they don't tell you, there's a way to find out what it is, so if you're interested, please dig up the secret with me. Let the tech trip begin. In order to properly understand CATL's condensed battery, it would be helpful to first examine and proceed with semi-solid batteries using solid polymer electrolytes that have been tried in the past. Among the previously uploaded videos, there was a video about an all-solid-state battery that uses lithium metal as a negative electrode and LFP as a positive electrode by Blue Solution of France. Let's take a closer look at the structure. Existing lithium-ion secondary batteries have a structure in which graphite constitutes the anode, and lithium is inserted into the graphite when the battery is charged. However, as shown in the animation, they did not use graphite, but directly used lithium metal foil as the anode. Therefore, the weight and volume occupied by graphite can be reduced. And instead of the liquid electrolyte used in the existing lithium-ion secondary battery, they introduced a polymer material. Solid-state polymers were used instead of highly volatile liquid electrolytes, which has the advantage of lowering the risk of explosion. Has been used. At the same time, in order to prevent the polymer electrolyte from being penetrated by lithium dendrites, a method of adding fluorine-based polymers was chosen. Since the ionic conductivity of the polymer electrolyte is low, the battery had to be operated in a heated state of about 60 degrees to compensate for it. Nevertheless, despite the use of LFP cathode material, which has a significantly lower energy density than the ternary cathode material, their all-solid-state battery showed an energy density of 250 watt-hour per kg, approaching the energy density of the Heinekel ternary cathode material, and its lifespan was more than 4,000 cycles. There was no doubt that this was an example that clearly demonstrated the potential of solid-state batteries. However, in the spring of last year, an electric bus equipped with semi-solid batteries was involved in two explosions in succession. It was shocking that a semi-solid battery that did not use a flammable liquid electrolyte exploded, even though it used a polymer-based electrolyte rather than an inorganic one. From the case mentioned above, we learn a few things. On the positive side, the application of polymer electrolytes makes it relatively easier to fabricate all solid-state batteries than when using sulfide-based solid electrolytes, and a sufficient cycle life can be secured. On the downside, the low lithium-ion conductivity requires incidental heating of the battery, and explosions and fires can occur even when non-liquid polymers are used. Then, how is CATL different from the semi-solid battery used by Blue Solution? A clue to discovering it can be found in their press release. 
If you look closely at their announcements, you'll find something like this. CATL's condensed battery leverages highly conductive biomimetic condensed state electrolytes to construct a micron-level self-adaptive net structure that can adjust the interactive forces among the chains, thus improving the conductive performance of the cells and in turn the efficiency of lithium-ion transporting while boosting stability of the microstructure. In fact, in this one sentence, all the important evidence about exactly what kind of solid electrolyte was used in CATL's condensation battery is condensed. Now, let's unravel the secret of the bamboo shroud. Before proceeding further, please subscribe, like, and set an alarm before watching. Sooner or later, a video will be uploaded on Samsung SDI's all-solid battery. So please don't miss the video by setting an alarm. First, let's find out which solid electrolyte they used. If you look closely at CATL's announcements related to condensed batteries, you will see the term chain. However, the term chain used here is a term that often appears when expressing polymeric materials in the field of material science. Because the constituent material of our most widely used plastics is a long chain of carbon atoms, it is being used like a nickname. Therefore, it can be seen that CATL's condensed battery contains a polymer-based material in a solid electrolyte. It is likely that the polyethylene oxide-based material used in the blue solution in France is included. And the most important secret is hidden in the second clue, the term biomimetic. Organisms are all composed of cells, and the organic substances constituting the cells do not exist in a scattered form but form a unique community according to the type of organic molecule. The same goes for animal skin and plant leaves. Therefore, it is assumed that the polymer electrolyte they plan to use has a very regular arrangement unlike the existing polymer electrolyte. That's why they use the term biomimicry. If so, how could they have induced such an arrangement? If you search through the patents filed by them, you can find a patent that matches the facts you predicted based on the article. The molecule shown here is a representative material shown in the patent filed by CATL, and if you read the contents closely, it is possible to manufacture a polymer electrolyte with high lithium ion conductivity. And in the context, a very important term, supermolecular, appears. In other words, as explained above, this means that these polymers form clusters in a regular form, like cells constituting a living body. The predictions made earlier hold true. Now, we will use animation for better understanding. The polyelectrolyte that they indicated in the patent looked like this. The composition marked in blue in the center and the composition marked in red forming the outer part have very different properties, and similar compositions tend to cluster together. In order to express this situation more simply, we will represent the polyelectrolyte material in a simple way. When a film is formed by appropriately controlling the conditions with a material having such a shape, it creates a form in which they are regularly arranged. The term self-assembly is used as a technical expression because the molecule itself creates an assembly in this way. This self-assembly technology is already widely used for various parts in LCD display production and has been widely known in the academic world as a technology that can significantly increase lithium-ion conductivity depending on the molecular structure. And CATL has boldly introduced this technology to condensed batteries. Looking back at what was in their presentation, it can be seen that the contents are completely consistent with the predictions made earlier, and according to the contents, the cluster size of this type of ordered polyelectrolyte reaches several microns. And looking at their patents, the lithium ion conductivity of the polymer electrolyte produced in this way is similar to that of the sulfide-based solid electrolyte that SDI and Toyota are trying. Looking at their other patents, it is judged that they have not reached the anode-free method promoted by Samsung SDI, and instead, more research has been focused on methods to prevent dendrite formation during the charging and discharging process in the anode made of lithium foil. 
Leaving aside the detailed technical analysis, CATL's movement in recent years is quite unique. In sodium ion batteries, energy density was increased compared to other companies by using cathode materials made of organic dyes instead of inorganic materials, and in this case, the problem of lithium ion conductivity of existing polymer electrolytes was solved by boldly adopting the self-assembly method of molecules instead of oxides or sulfides electrolytes. Seems to have solved it. This is a phenomenon that cannot be seen at all in other major secondary battery companies. What will be the outcome of these attempts? That's it for today. Goodbye.